Hello and welcome to Reroll, my name is Angus Morrison, starting October in style with a first look at the Battlefield 4 exclusive beta. Battlefield is developed by DICE and published by EA, and for anyone keen to take a look, it'll be hitting open beta on the 4th of October. It's completely free, so if you have the rig to play it, there's no excuse not to give it a try. Of course, this is not a review. The final release of Battlefield 4 is October 29th, so all my thoughts may be subject to change as the game develops. But I have to say that for a colossal online game, the day one beta was remarkably smooth. People are seeing frame rate drops, which will be noticeable in the footage, but things improved greatly over the course of the day. If you are hoping to play, it's important to update your graphics drivers. I had good results with the Nvidia beta drivers, other people are reporting the full release drivers performing better, but either way, if you're lagging unbearably, drivers are the place to start. People have been referring to Battlefield 4 as a glorified expansion, lacking the substance to be called a true sequel, particularly with regard to the graphics. But I am happy to say that that's simply not true, because while the models must be superficially close in polygon count, Battlefield 4 does some exciting things that its predecessor can't match. The texture work, lighting and sheer density of objects on display is astounding. If you get a moment to play, pick a large object like a tank and really study the texture. On top of high-res painted metal, there are the usual scratches interacting with the light, but on top of those again is a translucent layer of dust and grime only hinted at by the way sunlight plays off the surface. The subtlety that Frostbite 3 has permitted the artists is something to behold. Elsewhere they're less subtle. Battlefield 3 had its litter and its debris, but there was no escaping the fact that some levels could feel a little sterile, dedicated QB arenas rather than chaotic war zones. Battlefield 4's take on Shanghai feels lived in, fought over, and more believable than anything we've seen so far. Shops boast shelves and dummies, litter covers every surface, and the air is alive with smoke and debris. And while shelves and dummies might sound thoroughly mundane, it's the inclusion of seemingly inconsequential details that completes a virtual world. And you can have more impact on that world than ever before. There's no leveling every building a la Bad Company 2, but given the scale and complexity of the setting, I'll admit that makes sense, and the destruction blows Battlefield 3 out of the water. There are the small details like statues, shop signs and furniture that disintegrate under fire, larger details like walls and barricades that evaporate under artillery, and then there is the skyscraper. By now it's unlikely that you haven't seen footage of the monolith crashing into the bay and turning a rooftop battle into a fight among wreckage, but to experience it is something quite different. I was concerned that the event would feel too scripted, too much like a set piece which would get tired or have little impact on the game itself, but it's really fun. The game plays out differently each time, and the impact the skyscraper can have on your game brings dynamism to the usual back and forth. There's nothing quite like seeing opposing teams simultaneously stop dead, about face, and hurl themselves out the window as the ground shifts under them. It's not the learned response to a scripted event, but an impulsive reaction to the sudden realization that you're in a lot of trouble. The skyscraper is a strategically significant point in itself, so you're not concerned with deliberately bringing it down. You become so absorbed in the fighting that you forget it could bite the dust at any moment. It's not something that has to happen, it's just something that might happen, and that might brings welcome variation. For the moment, the game is somewhat inconsistent. Tiny signs will happily disintegrate, yet giant TVs remain unscathed if you go at them with a tank, and those are details I'd like to see addressed in the next month. Elsewhere, it's my firm belief that DICE's audio guys are witches. It's the only explanation. Battlefield 3 won multiple awards for its audio, but somehow they've raised the bar again. Everything from the motion of a rifle bolt inside its casing to the hiss of falling dirt after a grenade is captured with perfect clarity. It's not quite the bass heavy style I've heard in gameplay videos of Paracel Storm, so I do wonder whether we're playing an earlier build, but there's no denying it's a technical marvel. The only point I'd criticise is the fairly flat sound that comes with being shot. Rather than a harsh warning, the sound is similar to throwing at a dartboard, an almost weightless sound I associate more with fast-paced COD than heavy lifting battlefield matches. Weightlessness was one of my main concerns for Battlefield 4, and indeed the gun physics is quite different from BF3's. I found the AK-12 assault rifle to be almost without recoil, which removed much of the challenge that came with mastering Battlefield 3's arsenal. 
However, on experiencing the various classes, I suspect this has been done to delineate the weapon families more clearly. There are more guns split across more groups this time around, and in order to keep each feeling unique, the developers have utilized a much broader range of handling parameters. The assault rifles may behave well, but the PDWs retain that hefty BF3 kick. In the beta, there are only two primaries for each class, so I'll give my theory a proper test when the final copies go out. If there's one thing I'm most excited about, it has to be the tweaks to each class. All in all, it feels like DICE have listened to the community and made changes which cause each class to feel unique and, most importantly, a crucial part of the team. To use just one example, Recon, which was never a favourite in BF3, now has access to C4 and the motion mines of Bad Company 2, giving them the potential to play much more aggressively. For the long distance sniper, the portable laser designator will paint vehicles more conveniently than the soft lamp while illuminating players and ensuring that even the campers can remain a vital part of the battle. Each class has received similarly considered treatment and already Battlefield 4 looks to achieve better balance than the third instalment. Really, I have but one concern for Battlefield 4, but it is a big concern, and that's the battle packs. Battle packs are collections of randomised loot, from weapon attachments through to camo, awarded every few ranks and as you level up your guns. That in itself is nothing objectionable, and it certainly adds to the oh-so-linear tradition of unlocking each weapon and then unlocking each attachment for it. However, as far as I can tell, many attachments can only be unlocked through randomised battle packs, leaving you entirely at the mercy of chance to complete your loadout. And it would not surprise me in the slightest, especially seeing as battle packs are included as pre-order bonuses, that EA see this as an opportunity for microtransactions. This is entirely speculation, of course. It might be the case that battle packs are only unlocked by ranking up, and in that scenario, the one complaint I'd have is making some key attachments battle pack only. But if they are going to charge for them, it means we're being sold a deliberately convoluted game in order to extract more money. If all the attachments were unlockable in standard fashion and EA decided to charge for battle packs, that would be greedy but not objectionable from a gameplay perspective. If you put in the effort, you'll unlock them regardless. However, if these items can be unlocked no other way and battle pack contents are entirely random, the system is exploitative, designed awkward to deliberately push the player into paying still more. Currently, even iron sights, the lack of an attachment, are battle pack only. Battlefield 4 looks to be a technological wonder, and one that's backed up by extensive consideration of Battlefield 3's every floor. The world is beautiful and busy, whether it be flying rubble or the noise of gunfire rattling off buildings. Warfare has a flow to it that I haven't seen before, and there's strong incentive to work as a team. Aside from small concerns over gun physics and inconsistencies and destructible terrain, I am confident that Battlefield 4 deserves each bit of its hype. But knowing EA, I see microtransactions coming like a freight train, and should they appear without serious revisions to the unlock system, it'll be nothing but an exploitative cash grab which mars the face of an otherwise stellar experience. I would very much like to be wrong.